everyone. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Visual Studio Code in order to access some of the SharePoint uh, assets and being able to modify them without using uh, SharePoint Design. And so the main um, issue if you're using SharePoint Designer right now is that uh, it's not really um, platform uh, cross-platform compliant. So uh, you have to use a Windows operating system in order to get access to uh, the tool. Uh, the other thing too was the fact that uh, there's no git or any type of repo associated with it so you're pretty much stuck to that environment that environment only when you're developing so uh, if you need to you know export that uh, or commit that to git uh, what you will have to do is download the asset back uh, into your local environment put in the right folder and then after that uh, publishing those changes, which is inconvenient if you're working with quite a lot of assets. Um, in terms of extensions, there was not really any that you could install on top of the tool. Uh, that means you're pretty much stuck with the ID provided. Uh, and what that meant was uh, you know, intelligence for some of the uh, code that you may be writing on it uh, would have been uh, ideal. I mean, visual. Uh, studio, uh, which is under 13, 2015, 2017, uh, would have done a much better job uh, for you. Um, with Visual Studio Code, what you're going to notice and I'm going to show you is that you have the intelligence, you can bring in uh, NPM packages uh, and help you uh, enhance the way the code is visualized and obviously compile a lot better. And uh, finally, one of the major points which led me to, to the switch is the stability of the platform. I mean, um, there's a lot of things that you can do administration-wise with SharePoint designers, but overall, it, it tended to be like a very buggy tool when it comes to opening SharePoint online site. It will crash at uh, intermediate times. Um, and overall, it was just like a, a little frustrating experience. Now. Uh, the tool is strictly going to be used, what we're going to review today with Visual Studio Code is strictly uh, related to the development side of things, uh, you know, editing the ASPX page, master page, page layout, CSS, and things of that nature. When it comes to SharePoint designers, workflows, uh, SharePoint administration of content type or BCS connection, you would still need to use the user um, interface via the web or SharePoint Designer is still a good option. So uh, let's uh, dive right in. So the first thing that we want to do um, is basically download Visual Studio Code. So I have to remove it from this machine so I can walk you through the steps. Uh, you're going to type uh, Visual Studio Code download. Let's go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, you have the choices of the different platform in order to uh, install it at home. So I have it on my Mac too. Here I'm going to select the Windows version and I'm going to start the download. And once that's done, uh, I'm just going to go through the installation process, uh, which shouldn't take too long. Um, so the tool, uh, Visual Studio Code, obviously is not only used in the purpose of, uh, of SharePoint, uh, you can use it in many other uh, environment development type. Uh, but here we're just going to strictly focus on that specific scope. So I launch the code, should start the Visual Studio and bring it to the screen here. And you basically go through the normal step of installation right here. Make sure I'm going to create a desktop icon, install it. Um, good thing too, it's a pretty lightweight installation um, and so it's not going to eat up a lot of uh, resources that you may have on your computer compared to like Visual Studio for example. So here it's installing the stuff and once we do that what we're going to do is launch the extension pad and install uh, the SPGO extension, which is going to be the main extension for us to work with um, remote file. So 
finished the installation. As you can see, it's pretty quick. And it instantaneously uh, launched the Visual Studio project. All right, so that's the first step. The second step is spgo install. So right here, you're going to type SharePoint. Uh, you can type spgo directly just to find this particular extension. You can read the other ones. Some of them have a snippet to help you um, better write or quickly write some of the SharePoint uh, uh, code that comes. And so here, spgo, I'm going to go ahead and install that. Once it does, uh, what we're going to do is try to connect to one of the SharePoint sites that I have available online. So it's going to take a minute or so. And then I'm going to reload the Visual Studio code so that you have it installed right now. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, um, you have the command palette, so you can click right here. This allows you to uh, prompt or use command line in order to uh, run certain features. Um, the shortcut to on um, PC is like uh, FN of one, but right here, what we're going to do is command palette and then type spgo. <clears throat> and you're going to see all the different commands that are available to you. Um, and the first one being uh, configure workspace. We need to configure like a JSON file in order to connect to our environment. So I'm going to click on that <coughs> and it say you must open a folder. So like I said, you need to create a, a workspace and a work environment in order to do that. So what I'm going to do is select a workspace that is already you know, kind of like connected to my GitHub. So it could be anywhere here. I'm going to call that test. Here, select this folder. So this will be the main folder uh, that I will use to basically uh, connect to SharePoint. It's going to download the local file and then push them to the SharePoint site when I'm saving. So now we're ready to use the command palette again. Configure workspace. And right here it's going to ask us three questions. The first one is which environment do you want to connect to? So right here I have a site connection used for testing and then it's going to ask us the default behavior when we're um, hitting control s or like saving and so i think the better option is to use the major version so that way it's automatically published um, when you're saving so here and then you have different authentication method uh, the one that i'm going to use because we're on the default Office 365 SharePoint Online instance is the digest right now. Okay, so here it basically created or populated the JSON files for you. So the next step is to use the command palette again and then retrieve a folder. So we're going to use spgo and then retrieve folder. It's going to ask me for my credentials, so I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And then here it's going to ask me which folder do I want to retrieve. So um, you could be working from site assets, um, you could be working from site pages, if you want to touch the master page, let's just do that in the first time, it's going to uh, catalog master, and this would have been catalog master pages. When you enter, if it's a success, you're going to see um, that are being downloaded right here. So I may have spelled that wrong. Okay, so it's, um, it's always the opposite. It's catalog massive page. So let's do that. And this will catalog us. So you're going to see the source folder right here, and this is all the assets that are coming from uh, SharePoint. So 
I mean, this is basically like your master page, page layout, uh, you have access to uh, site pages if you want. So right here we're just going to connect again, retrieve folder, and then I'm going to give you an example for site pages. Okay. You have our site pages. Um, if you want to create a new file, what you can do is create a file first, which is only going to store it in your local and then after that publish that file. And any save after that will be instantaneous. So let's do a demo right here with the SPS. And in this demo, I'm just going to put some default HTML to get us started. So I save that. If we go now to the web and try to hit that URL right here, you're going to notice that since I haven't published the file yet, uh, nothing else going to show up. So, pages, SPS. It's going to do a fourth. Oh, okay. So let's save it. Um, and so now, uh, any subsequent changes that I'm making to the platform is automatically going to save that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's a good way to, to work. Uh, you're going to notice too that as I'm doing this change, because I have connected to my um, Git right here, if I were to take a look at what got changed right here, you're going to notice that uh, it connected to my um, GitHub, and I just have to commit that. So it makes it pretty simple if you need to um, connect to kind of like a code repo. Um, so yeah, uh, overall, uh, you know, if it's used for the purpose of development, I think this is a better option. Um, if you have any questions, uh, if you have any thoughts, let me know. Uh, I'm always happy to take on comments or feedback. And I uh, hope you have a good one. Thank you for your time. And uh, see you soon.